Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're talking about the sequel to Serpent and Dove, which is Blood and Honey. This beautiful, beautiful little thing right here by Shelby Mahurin. Mahurin. Whoever she is, she know how to write a book because it is good. Uh, so I gave this one a five star on Goodreads. And so... I will say it was probably like a four and a half star. So I just rounded it up to five star. It's still a really good book. It's still a really good series. It just wasn't a, a, a I didn't wake up at four o'clock in the morning and read this book. And I didn't, it wasn't like a, you know, oh my gosh, couldn't put it down. And that is usually what my five stars are is because I literally will wake up at four o'clock in the morning and can't go back to sleep because I'm thinking about the freaking book. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Jennifer Armitrout. I'm looking at you. And I'm looking at you, Sarah J. Moss. <laughs> but this was still a really good book. Um, so, I think it kind of, I don't, maybe, maybe the story dragged a little bit in some parts. And that's why I gave it a four and a half. But it wasn't, it wasn't to the point that I would be like, oh, mm, this is a four. It was still a really good book. It just, I don't know. Maybe because you you already had the the tension of the first book between Lou and Reed, and you still have tension in this book between Lou and Reed, uh, between Lou and everybody. Okay, so here's our little synopsis right before we get into the details, into the spoilers. Uh, so Lou, because she is now the cat is out of the bag and she is using her magic, she's starting to get a little crackery. Like, Lou is starting to act a little bit like her mom. Like a little psycho. For real. And there's this tension with her and Reed. Because Reed sees what's happening to her. Coco sees what, like, literally everybody around her sees what's happening to her. And she doesn't want to accept it. And so, Reed doesn't want her to use magic. Because, I don't know if y'all can see. It's my, my N7. I like my effect. So, Reed doesn't want her to use magic because of what it's doing to her. But Lou, like most people who are hauling towards an inevitable bad ending, don't want to stop. <laughs> so that's the main source of the tension in the book. Um, also, there is some, there's a confrontation with Morgaine. There is some new characters, which I really like the new characters. And so, yeah, so I thought it was a really good read. I, you should, if you have not read Serpent and Dove and Blood and Honey, you totally should. Uh, like I said, I give it uh, five stars on my Goodreads and that's because I, I rounded up. <laughs> so now it's time for the spoilers, spoilers. All right. So this one picks up kind of where the other one left off. You know, on the other one, like they were... They were at the, whatever, the Modronite, Modronite, and Reed used magic and sacrificed the Archbishop to save Lou. And they escaped the Chateau LeBlanc, which is where the uh, Dom Blanche, um, Morgane's witches live. So, they're in the forest, okay, around uh, Chateau LeBlanc, and they're trying to survive in the wilderness, basically, because the, the chasseurs are looking for them. The, the chast, the witch hunters. The Don Blanches are looking for them. So, they're on the run. And they're in the woods. And they're hiding out. And there's bounties on their heads. So, here's one of my quotes. And it's pretty early on. Because Lou is just like... Lou is... <laughs> Lou's kind of in denial. And she's just like, let's just live in the woods and be happy forever. And pretend like nothing else is going on. <laughs> and... Madame LaBelle, who is Reed's mother, says um, to Lou, she says, I understand your reluctance to confront this, Louise, but closing your eyes will not make it so the monsters can't see you. It will only make you blind. And Lou and Reed decide there's a stream close by to where their camp is. And so they decide to go for some private time in the stream. And it ends up them just, you know, kind of talking 
and they hear something and they have to hide under the water and it's the chass have shown up, have found them. And so Lou is using magic to help them breathe, but she gets drained. And so Reed has to use magic to save them and he ends up killing the chasseurs, uh, the witch hunters and healing Lou, but he's about dead because he doesn't, I mean, he's never been taught how to use magic. So he is, he almost kills himself saving Lou. Uh, so, that's the dog. So, Madame LaBelle is, like, fussing them out because, you know, she's like, I told you not to leave camp. Like, you should have known better, you know. Uh, Lou is sitting on a rock, on a root, like, kicking her feet, like, not listening. <laughs> and when she does, her boot comes loose and, like, a note falls out. And it's from Morgane and it's a riddle. And Reed figures it out that Morgane is planning an attack on the Archbishop's funeral. So, they're still in the woods. Lou, they're trying to figure out how they're going to sneak back into uh, Caesarean or Chesarine or however you say it, the city where the king is at um, and where the Archbishop's funeral is going to be to stop Morgane because they think Morgane's going to kill all these innocent people. So, they're in the woods and... Lou gets the bright idea to let Bo, uh, the prince, dye her hair uh, as a disguise. And that goes about as well as it sounds like it would go. <laughs> Some of her hair falls off and it ends up white, which makes her look like her mother, which she's already kind of going down the cray cray aisle, you know what I'm saying? Um, so... She's mad. She storms off uh, so that she doesn't, you know, turn Bo into a frog or something. And when she comes back, Reed is, like, picking with her to try and make her feel better. And so here's a quote from Lou. She says, Someday I wouldn't need to hoard Reed's smiles, and someday he wouldn't need to ration them. You know, she's thinking, you know, one day we're actually going to be able to just enjoy each other and enjoy life and... So, Ansel uh, wants to train because he, you know, he was training to be a chasseur and, uh, or chasseur, I don't know how you say it. Eh, eh. Uh, je parle un peu français, but I don't know how you say chasseur. So, I know chasseurs is shoes, but I don't know what a chasseur is. It's to chase. It's a chaser, the switch hunter, but I don't know how you say it. So, uh... <laughs> Ansel wants to train because he was training to be a chass, and Lou takes him, um, you know, out to train. They go to, they find this town, and they go to the tavern because they're going to do some recon, right? That's the plan, and they're going to try and be low-key while they do this recon, and I mean, it's a book, so y'all, y'all know what was going to happen, right? It was not, <laughs> it was not going to be low-key at all. So, there's this really overly friendly man that comes along and is chatting up Lou and Reed and the gang. And it basically raises suspicions because of what Lou is saying to the man. And so, then there's a bar brawl, right? And Reed and Lou are fighting. And Coco and LaBelle, uh, Coco, LaBelle, Ansel, and Bo are trying to get all the villagers out of the pub so they don't get hurt by the magic or the weapons or, you know, take your pick of things that could hurt villagers um, in a bar brawl with magic beings. So, <laughs> the overly friendly man, whose name is Claude Devereaux, sets the pub on fire. Yeah, yeah. Sets the pub on fire. So... <laughs> Lou and Reed escape, but Lou is hurt, and Coco heals her, and Lou wakes up to, like, Coco and Reed are arguing about Lou, and they don't know Lou's awake, and she hears them arguing, and Reed's like, you know, like, I love her, she's going a little cray-cray since she's been using magic, like, shouldn't we be concerned, and Coco's like, oh yeah, that she's already started, started the descent, I don't know if it's the descent into madness. I mean, nobody ever says what she's dissenting into, but it certainly seems like a descent into madness. So, Lou kind of makes some noise to let them know that she's awake, and they discuss the plan for getting some allies. Uh, Reed does not want to use magic, and a discussion, it's not really an argument, um, but it's a discussion, a debate, 
ensues between Lou and Reed, and Lou comes up with a solution. She says that Reed can travel with Devereaux and the actors, and Devereaux's like, well, that's fine, but everybody who rides, you know, if you gonna ride, you gonna contribute. So, what you gonna do? So, they all have to come up with an act, the ones that are riding with them, and uh, Absalon, which is a Matagot, it's some kind of like demon that follows lost souls or something. Uh, it's been following Lou this whole time. Like, we didn't know who it was following in the first book, but it's following Lou. Um, and Absalon the cat goes with Lou, or the fox. Is Absalon the fox or the cat? No, Absalon's the cat. It, she ends up having like a whole menagerie of Matagats. Matagats? Yeah. And uh, so they make it to the Blood Witch camp, which is where Coco's aunt lives. And. Uh, they're told that, like, they're all going to be sharing the same tent and that there's a boy missing. And so, which Lou's like, huh, what do you mean there's a boy missing? So, the Dom Blanches, uh, Lou's mother and those witches, do not keep their sons. Their sons are discarded, given up, given to orphanages, whatever. They don't keep their sons because they didn't think sons had magic until Reed proves that sons can have magic. But the blood witches do keep their sons. Um, so there's actually a boy missing from the Blood Witch camp. And La Voisine, who is Coco's aunt, uh, tells Lou and Ansel they got to go. She's like, I don't want you here. And Coco says but that she wants Coco to stay, basically, and become, you know, the leader of their people that she's supposed to be. And Coco says, well, uh, let us try and find the boy. And if we don't find him, you know, then Ansel and, and Lou will leave and I'll stay. Well... Then we switch to Reed's point of view, because the point of view switched just like they did in the first book. So, we switch to Reed's point of view, and he's practicing his, practicing his knife throwing because his act, you know, I told you everybody's got to contribute. So, his act is that he throws knives at his mom, Madame LaBelle, while she's spinning around on a, on a circle thing, a board. Yeah. Yeah. So, they come up with the name for him, which is the Red Death, because he's got red hair. And Devereaux actually tells Reed that his trauma is causing him some emotional issues. Imagine that. I mean, he's been through a trauma, right? And uh, Reed's like, you don't know me. You know, where do you get off telling me that? You don't know me. And Devereaux tells him, you know, and this is a quote from Devereaux. He says, perhaps not, but I do know that you don't know yourself. And I know you cannot know another until you do. Like, you know, basically you can't really know and accept someone else until you know and accept yourself. And I think that's very wise advice from Devereaux. So, they're in the wagon and Reed is talking to Bo and he asks about Bo's sister and he asks about the king and Bo kind of, Bo tells them, but then he kind of reminds them, you know, if we, if we don't make it, dude, it ain't gonna matter because we're gonna be dead. <laughs> So, when Reed wakes up, LaBelle is in his wagon, and she's made him some tea, and she's, like, trying to have a relationship with him, and he's kind of being a jerk because he's resentful because she left him in the trash in his mind. She didn't. Morgane did, but still, in his mind, you were my mother, and you gave me up. And so, she's kind of being, he's kind of being a jerk, and she has to have a come-to-Jesus meeting with him about magic. So, now we switch back to Lou. And Lou and Ansel are walking through the woods, looking for the boy and talking. Gabby, who's the little sister of the boy that's missing, is talking with Ansel and Lou. And Lou just kind of instantly loves this little girl. And uh, Lou feels a tugging sensation in her chest and follows it and finds the guy. And basically, his body has been left at her tent and he's been burned and de decapitated. Um, now we switch back to Reed. And Reed is trying to make friends with Toulouse and Thierry, which his mother told him that he should do. Um, and it's it's kind of pitiful because they're, they're not making it easy on him. They're having no pity for him. They have zero, zero you-know-whats to give. None. <laughs> so... Then Toulouse tells him, like, dude, we know who you are. Like, we know how you became a captain of the Chass. Because apparently they were in a nearby, they were doing a show in the same area where Reed was at. Apparently when he was 
16, I guess, or whatever, a new chest, he attacked some werewolves in the woods and killed the werewolf leader's son. And that's how he became a captain. Um, and they, they know what he did and they basically like call him out. And, um, so we switch back to Lou and so the boy is outside of Lou's tent and basically it's a message from Lou's mother because this boy and his sister were children of the king. And it's basically Morgaine is targeting all the king's illegitimate children. Anybody have like Game of Thrones, you know, when, uh... Joffrey went after all of uh, King Robert's illegitimate children. Yeah, that's what it reminded me of, too. So, um, the mother and the father of the boy that was killed uh, paint a pot for his ashes with their blood. And it's they're actually, like, spelling the pot to protect it. And they go to a grove to hang his pot with all the other pots of the blood witches. And Gabby, the little girl, goes missing. So, because of Morgaine's attack now on Gabby, Lavoisine finally decides to join Lou. So, now we switch back to Reed. And here's a quote from LaBelle because she's trying to, like, she's basically trying to get him to save himself because she's afraid that he's going to get hurt trying to save Lou. And so, she says, when a person brings you more hurt than happiness, you're allowed to let them go. You do not have to follow them into the dark. Um... But we all know, come on now, read, read going where Lou goes. That's what, that was part of his vow to her. Where you go, I'll go. So, Reed is watching Toulouse and, and Terry, and he actually learns about good magic from watching them because they do, they do good magic and they don't hurt anybody and there's no nasty cost like when Lou does magic. So, when Reed does his act... Lo and behold, it's not his mom, but Lou that's strapped to the thing. And it's like kind of this like cute little moment. And they have this little banter. And then Lou starts telling stories. And and Reed almost cuts her head off um, by accident. Like not on purpose. Like, but he was, you know, throwing the final, the finale of the act is he throws a sword at the spinning thing. And Lou was telling a story. So it didn't go to it. Um, so, after the show, everybody's drinking, kind of celebrating being back together. Ansel and Coco slip off, and Lou is eavesdropping on them because that's what Lou likes to do. Also, it's it's a way for us to know what's going on, right? Because if Lou didn't eavesdrop on them, because it's, it's, it's everything's from Lou's point of view, pretty much, except when we're in Reed's point of view. But if it wasn't for Lou eavesdropping, we wouldn't know what happens between Ansel and Coco. So, Coco actually kisses Ansel twice, but she doesn't feel anything for him, which is so sad. And y'all, it again, it reminds me of that song, If I Loved You by Delta Ray. If you have not listened to it, listen to it because it's awesome. Um, and she basically tells him, like, she wishes that she could love him the way he loves her, but she just, she doesn't. Um, and poor Ansel is, like, heartbroken uh, and Lou finds Coco and talks to her and tries to make her feel better. And they're kind of off away from everybody. And Cloud, Claude Devereaux is like, you know, all right, kids, like it's time. Let's everybody go to bed. And about that time, uh, a group of men show up with weapons, a group of raiders, bandits, whatever you want to call them. And Bass is with them. Yes, that Bass. Lou's ex-lover Bass. Bass that she broke out of prison, and now he gonna show up with some weapons at the camp. Yeah. Um, and Reed, like, they end up fighting. Reed gets gutted by Bass. Yeah. And Coco has to uh, heal him. The leader tries to stab Coco, and Lou throws Reed's balisarda at the leader, who then dodges it, and the balisarda goes into the tree, and the tree eats it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And then there's this whole thing because Reed has lost his Balisardo, which is like part of his identity, like the major part of his identity. Lou and the Bell start, you know, squabbling. Coco takes Reed to the wagon to like finish healing him. And she gives him a vial of her blood mixed with honey, thus blood and honey, uh, which will heal him. Um, so they have to part ways when they get close to the city, and so they separate from Devereaux, and Reed finally comes clean and tells Lou how he, 
um, became a captain. And she's like, you know, we can't go to the werewolves and ask for their help because they're gonna want to. They're gonna want to kill you. And Reed is like, you know what? No, like I need to kind of own. I need to own up what I, to what I did, which I respect that Reed. I respect that. Own your garbage. Own your garbage. Um, he, so he decides that he's gonna challenge Blaze uh, to a duel to fulfill his blood debt. So, in the woods, they stop and take a break. Ansel wants to train. Lou and Reed are debating fighting styles because Reed, Reed is a trained soldier and Lou is a trained hoodlum. <laughs> so, they have different fighting styles. And, um, and so, they're debating it and Lou kind of goes down the crazy aisle again and... Uh, tries to compel Reed to fight her with magic, but he's able to fight the compulsion. Um, the wolves end up finding them in the woods. Lou tries to talk them into an alliance, but they're like, uh-uh. Like, we, no, we've already talked to your mama. <laughs> we already talked to Morgane, and we don't want an alliance with you. So, Reed challenges Blaze to a duel, and Blaze refuses and instead says, I tell you what, I'm going to give you the chance to run. If you make it to town, you get to live. But there's no alliance. So, they actually they give him a head start, which is, you know, sporting of them. So, Reed tries to find the river because he's been in this area before because this is where he killed the dude's kid. So, he tries to find the river, but it has moved. Like, the landscape has changed since the last time he was here. So, he climbs the trees, and he's going that way, but then he falls and blazes on him, and he tries to talk to him. Um, but Blaze is trying to kill him, and he's trying to ad dodge Blaze's attacks. Lou, who was not supposed to intercede, um, that then was one of the rules. Can't take it, because that's her man. So she intercedes and, like, jams her fist into the swamp and turns the whole swamp to ice. And the three wolves that were guarding her, making sure she didn't intercede, go to fight her. Lou goes down the cray cray aisle and buys up everything. <laughs> She's like, she is out there, y'all. She's out there. And Coco tries to talk her down. But about the time she gets Lou talked down, the freaking chaff show up. And it's Jean-Luc and his squad. And he and Lou are going back and forth. They're fighting. He wants to know where, where Reed is. Lou traps John luc in uh, a circle of ice spears sticking up out of the ground and is fighting him, trying to kill him. Uh, Reed shows up and has to talk her down from her cray cray again, again. <laughs> and she kind of like comes out of it, like wakes up from a daze and Coco is injured from fighting with John Luke. Uh, Terrence, Blaze's son, his, his other son, is, like, gravely injured because Lou, like, hit him with some magic. Yeah. Um, which was not going to help their case, by the way. Reed gives him the vial of Coco's blood and honey. And, and it heals him. And this actually leads to an alliance with Terrence and his sister because they're like, you know, okay, Reed, so we kind of owe you a blood debt now because you saved our lives. Well... He saved Terrence's life, and so he, him and his sister feel a debt towards Reed. So, anyway, the Chass literally have to haul Jean-Luc off screaming and <laughs> kicking and screaming, literally, because he just, he wants to kill Reed, Lou, everybody. Um, so, now the team has to beat the Chass back to Chesserine or Cesarine. Um, Lou now has three Madagots. Madagots, yeah following her around, like a rat, a fox, and a cat, I think. I think is what they were. So, they make it to Cesarine, and Lou sends Absalon, the cat, with a message to Devereaux to kind of let him know, hey, we need help getting in the city. So, he sends to Lou Centuri with some costumes, and everybody makes it in the city without a peep except Reed. Reed, of course, because he's Reed, gets busted and has to make a run for it. And he has to climb to Lou, and Reed is scared of heights. And Reed, I feel you, buddy, because I'm scared of heights, too, so I get it. So, he has to climb the buildings to get to Lou and to get away from the chass. 
So, um, while they're trying to get to uh, the place where they're staying, the Leviathan, they actually come uh, across Manon, uh, who's one of the witches who works with, with Lou's mother. And she's killing this guy, Gills. And I don't know if he's like her lover or if they were just friends or if they even know it. Like, it kind of feels like they know each other, but you don't really know. You don't, you don't get the backstory. Um, and kind of find out because, uh, he's one of the king's children. You know, Morgan was hunting down the king's children, and Gills was one of them. So, Reed and Lou duck into a shop to kind of hide from the witches in the chaos, and they finally have it out. I mean, it's kind of, it's been coming the whole book, and they finally have it out. Uh, and, and Reed kind of goes off and says what he needed to say. He needed to say it, and she needed to hear it. Uh, and he leaves. And Lou kind of rages and cries. Um, they finally make it to the Leviathan, which is the pub uh, and inn where they're staying at. And the gang's all there. And Reed wants to talk to the king. He's like, you know, I still think that we can get the king on our side against more gang. And Bo's like, all right, cool. Let's go to the castle and talk to the king. So they use some secret tunnels to get to the throne room. And Bo speaks with the king, his his father, while Reed watches from the tunnel entrance with Madame LaBelle. The king is having none of it and goes off on Bo. And by the time they realize that, oh crap, this is a trap, it's too late, somebody knocks Reed out. So back in the Leviathan, uh, the group starts arguing about what they need to do because the wolves are like, hey, look, our debt was to Reed and Reed's not here. So... Uh, we out. And the witches are like, of course, because you're cowards. And Lou's like, no, everybody needs to work together. So anyway, they all start fighting. Lou sets Coco on fire because Lou's just back in the crazy aisle, buying everything up. And when she realizes what she's done, she's like, oh my God, Coco, I'm so sorry. And she's crying. And I'm like, okay, you cried, but you set your friend on fire. How about don't set your friend on fire? Just don't do it. <laughs> So, so, uh, back to Reed, Bo, Reed, and LaBelle are all in the dungeon being questioned by the king, who is being a complete and total jerk face. Um, I mean, he's just, he's just mean. He's mean and nasty. He's mean and nasty to Reed. He's mean and nasty to LaBelle, and he's mean and nasty to Bo. He's just mean and nasty. So, uh, he leaves them for the archbishop's furniture, and the twins, Bo's little sisters, actually come and break them loose. So, the Chass show up. And Reed and Bo make a run for it while LaBelle holds them off. So, LaBelle is now in the clutches of the king and the Chass, okay? Lou is on the roof of the Leviathan. We switch back to Lou. Is on the roof of the Leviathan. And she's actually having like a heart-to-heart -heart with God. You know, like just kind of pouring her heart out and... She finally kind of admits, you know, that she's lost and doesn't really know, you know, what she's doing. And uh, so Devereaux joins her and he tells her that he knew her mother and that, you know, she's nothing like her because Lou feels herself going down that road. And he still won't say what he is. She's like, Devereaux, what are you? Or Claude, what are you? And he's like, what are you? <laughs> you know, he answered a question with a question. And Lou answers, a snake. And so, uh, you know, because she was called a snake in the first book, like the archbishop called her a snake. And so, here's a quote from Devereux. And he says, what you are now is not what you've always been, nor is it what you always will be. You are a snake. Shed your skin if it no longer serves you. Transform into something better, something different. And Reed comes to the roof right about then and hugs her and tells her, you know, that they've got LaBelle. And so, Devereaux's like, you know what? We're, we're going to handle the funeral. You guys, which means Reed, Lou, Bo, Coco, and Ansel, stay here in the inn because everybody knows who you are. Like, you're on wanted posters everywhere. You guys stay here. Which is, it does two things. I mean, yeah, they are on the wanted posters, but it's also an opportunity for Bo to actually get to mourn and grieve the Archbishop. So, uh, 
Lou says to Reed, because Reed's kind of, he's reliving all these memories of the Archbishop because his funeral procession is going right past him in the end. And uh, Lou says to Reed, sometimes it hurts to remember the dead as who they were rather than who we wanted them to be. And she kind of comforts him while he grieves and while he's having these memories. And they actually have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. And it's like the talk that they've needed to have the whole book. Um, the one in the shop was like kind of the come to Jesus meeting. And this one is the I still love you talk. And uh, followed by some beautiful intimacy. Uh, and then back in the bar, Lou gets another note and they finally put it together that Morgane's not attacking the funeral. She's going to attack the masquerade de cranes, uh, which is the ball of skulls or some party that happens in the catacombs. So, uh, and that she's taking Salie, which is Reed's ex-girlfriend, now Jean-Luc's girlfriend. So, uh, Lou lets Nicolina the creepy blood witch. She's like La Voisine's second, but she's like creepy. I, I don't know. She's like a spirit. Like she's not even really corporeal. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, so she lets Nicolina distract Reed while she slips into the storeroom and uh, the tunnel and she blocks the trap door with her dagger and then she blocks it with magic to keep Reed from coming after her because Coco like tastes her blood and, and tells her that a man close to her heart will die. So, to protect Reed, she magics the door so Reed can't come after her. So, Reed and the group end up having to go to a different tunnel entrance, which is in the cemetery. So, when they get into the tunnels, something extinguishes the torches and people start disappearing. And then it goes out again and more people disappear. It's kind of like, kind of reminds me of like, you know, a scary movie. Like, the lights go out and people disappear. So... <laughs> When Reed uses magic to make a flame, um, the only people that are left is Bo, Coco, Blaze, and Jean-Luc. That's it. Everybody else is missing. So, switch back to Lou. Lou wanders through the tunnels and ends up wandering in the right direction. And she ends up in the tomb of the clergyman, including the archbishop. And she kind of has this uh, aha moment of, okay, I know where they are. So, uh, this goes back to Reed. Reed and Jean-Luc, as they're walking through the tunnels trying to find Salie, actually have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Uh, Blaze catches Lou's scent, but the others, but, but other people as well, which ends up being the Chas. So, the Chas show up, and Jean-Luc has to defend Reed, and he, he basically tells them that they have new orders, which is to find and kill Morgane, who's somewhere in the catacombs. So, we switch back to Lou, and Lou gets to the Tremblay tomb, which is the Salise Sol family's tomb, and uh, to Philippa's casket, which is the sister that was killed by the witches um, because the father was selling magical artifacts. That's whose townhouse Lou broke into in the first book. So uh, Ansel shows up. He followed her, and she, because... Coco said, a man close to your heart will die. And so, if it's not Reed, what if it's Ansel? So, she says some very nasty things to Ansel to try and make him leave. But he won't go. He refuses. And so, the coffin opens up and poor Salie is inside with her sister's uh, decomposing body. Yeah. And she's been in there for weeks. And she can't get out because... Uh, Morgane basically enchanted her or put a spell on her that the only way she could leave the coffin is if she leads Lou to Morgane. Yeah. So, she's kind of having a little bit of a breakdown, which is understandable. I think any of us would probably be having a little bit of a breakdown in that situation. <laughs> so, Lou kind of has to, like, grab her face and, like, tell her to get it together or Reed's going to die. And so, the girl, you know, gets up. So, they end up at the Masquerade de Crohn's and they end up, I don't know, that was like a mix of Spanish and French. I don't know what happened there. Uh, they end up in a cavern with benches, kind of like an amphitheater, but underground. And uh, Morgane has corpses floating around her. It's more people that she's killed that were the king's sons. And there are a whole bunch of people that are magic to sit on the benches and watch everything that's happened. The witches are there too. 
Um, Morgane is given this, you know, the classic, like, villain speech, right? Like, spelling out her plan and, ha, 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 you fell for it beautifully, blah, 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 you know. And Lou is giving her snark, like, you thought you had me. And <laughs> so, Morgane actually has Gabby, the little girl from the Blood Witch camp, and she starts torturing her and Ansel throws a knife and hits her in the hand. So, Morgane starts throwing fireballs at him. Um, and Lou cuts her and stabs her, but at the last second, she kind of hesitates and doesn't kill her, and at the same moment, kind of, Reed shows up with, uh, the chass, and Morgan hurls, Morgan hurls a fireball at Reed, uh, Devereaux comes in at the last second, catches it, and he heads for Morgan and Lou, and they both kind of stop and look at him. And he changes into the Wood Woes, which is this uh, mythical wood god with cloven feet and stag antlers. And he tries to, like, talk some sense into Morgane, who, I mean, you know, you, you might as well talk that wall back there. Because Morgane's going to do what she wants to do. Like, there's not going to be any talking sense into her. Because she, you know, the Cray Cray train left the station and it ain't never coming back. Okay? <laughs> it is gone. Okay, you only you never gonna find it. So uh she backs away like she's gonna leave and he's gonna let her, and then at the last second she kills Ansel. Yeah. 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 Coco is crying, and y'all know Coco's a blood witch, so her blood has power, her tears have power, she tries not to cry because when she cries, she sets stuff on fire. And now she's crying. And stuff's going on fire. Uh, and Lou goes after Morgane, who just taunts Lou with Ansel's death. And Lou kind of loses it. She shatters. And light explodes from her skin. And she's getting ready to kill Morgane. And she even knows that to kill Morgane, she's going to have to kill one of her friends and she doesn't care. Like, she's at this point, she is ready to do whatever she has to do to kill Morgane. Reed stops her. And Morgane runs. Um, so, back in the... I'm sorry, y'all. It just... Mm. Okay. The end of this book, like... Oh, oh, my God. Okay. So, they're back in the pub in the Leviathan. And Lou is in a room with Live La Salon, Live La Scene, and Nicolina. And she's telling them, like... We're going to burn down Chateau LeBlanc. Like, I'm going to burn it with all of them inside. And La Voisine's like, well, no, because the whole point is we want the Blue Witches to come back and live in Chateau LeBlanc. And she's like, well, that's fine. They can live in it after they clean out my sister's ashes. <laughs> like, Lou is like, <laughs> Lou's like, no, they got to die. They all going to die. She kind of reminds me of Danny from Game of Thrones. Like, the whole Mad Queen thing. And I'm, I didn't like it. Let's just put it that way. So, uh, Nicolina and La Voisine lock the door of the room they're in with Lou. And they're kind of like, well, how do you think your mom knew where you were? How do you think those notes kept ending up in your boots? Because, and I don't know. So, you can't tell. Like, are they working with Morgane? Or are they, Lou's there and they're going to use Lou to their advantage? So, they cast a spell on Lou, and I don't know if Nicolina possesses Lou, if La Voisine possesses Lou. I think it's Nicolina because she kept saying she was going to have Reed's kisses. So, I think Nicolina possesses Lou. At any rate, something happens, right? We don't know what. And then it cuts to Reed's point of view, and Reed says the door opens and Lou comes out grinning. Now, why would Lou be grinning? Because Lou was devastated, right? Lou loved Ansel, so why would she be grinning? He says she comes out grinning, and she pisses up, uh, pisses him, kisses him passionately, <laughs> and that's the end. That's the end of the book, so it definitely ends on a cliffhanger. I was just like, like, y'all, the end of that book, like, ugh, mm, made my feelings hurt. Uh, so, now we're going to have to wait for the third one to come out before we even know what in the crap has happened to Lou. <laughs> so, 
So thanks you guys for tuning in and uh, we'll catch you next time. Bye.